Check it out guys, I'm back with my video response to episode 270 and what an episode, it's been a long time coming and uh, I couldn't I couldn't believe it when I saw that there was an episode there, I was really really excited and I uh, just had to download it and listen to it. I've been a bit lazy with my video response because I haven't been home all that much but here it is people, for all the six people that watch it. Um, yeah, I'm finally recording with a microphone this time, I'm trying something different so let's hope this works. But um, yeah, I hope you like that intro. My voice is very raspy because I have the flu or something or the cold or a, a bird flu or something or a pig swine flu. Who knows? Who knows? But it's not going to stop me from this video response. Um, yeah, cool episode, guys. I, um, I really enjoyed it. There's uh, some, some interesting news in it, but let's just go through a few things that I've uh, highlighted here that we can uh, chat about. So... Um, the, uh, the first thing I just want to talk about, the Guitar Facts book, the review, I thought that was really cool. I, I went to try to purchase that, but it's only on Kindle. There is an app for the um, iPhone, Kindle app for it, so I may just try to purchase it. That way, I'm still in the mindset that I like old-fashioned books because I don't have any type of tablet uh, because I just wouldn't use one hardly ever. I may use it for a guitar amp, um, which I'm thinking about if the iPad Mini 2 comes out and it's a... It's, it's decent. Maybe I'll get one. I'm just not sure if I'll actually use it. Uh, so, but yeah, I was I was really interested in that in that book because there are a lot of questions like exactly how to use like you're saying how to use a tube screamer. I always wondered for years how people used one with um, well for heavy metal when they when they're putting a, a tube screamer in front of an already distorted amp because I used to try it heaps. I've got a TS7 and it's a bit a bit rubbish to be honest, but um, I don't know what it is with mine. It's just so noisy. Maybe because I modified it. But um, yeah, I, I just didn't realize it's just that boost and mid-hump frequency that you're really sort of pushing into your amp to get that type of sound. It's it's kind of strange because thinking about that, you're putting that into an amp and then you're backing off a lot of the mids to get that metal tone. So um, you kind of got like, I guess, flat mids because a tube screen is very mid-orientated or mid-upper orientated. But um, I thought it was really cool. So um. Yeah, I'll probably get the Kindle app and um, just get it on my um, iPhone so I can have a browse in that. Because there are a lot of questions that, especially when you're starting out, you're kind of embarrassed to ask people. But um, all in all, I thought that was really cool. Um, and guys, yes, next thing. Thanks for uh, playing my uh, guitar story on there. And a very special thank, thank you to uh, Larry from Ashbrook Music. I really, really appreciate Larry taking the time to narrate the story. I wrote that story... Geez, on and off the last maybe a year ago or so. And then um, I had uh, my good friend Dave Mack um, read a bit of it, let me know if I was uh, not sounding too cocky or, or whatever or, or too out there and that sort of thing. But uh, that's the actual story that happened. That's um, pretty much how I got into playing guitar. If I didn't have that uh, car to sell and a friend of mine didn't ask me to start a band with him back in high school. I don't, I don't know if I would have picked up the guitar uh, then or e even, even now. I don't know. It's hard to say whether I do mean now. I, I just, I don't look at guitar as a hobby. I look at it as more of an obsession or as a lifestyle, because everything that you sort of look at when you, when you're into it, when you're a musician or, or a guitarist, is everything revolves around music. Everything. You know, when you're when you're going out and you're thinking of things to buy, music comes into into the question so often. And, you know, you're always thinking, you know, do I have enough money to get another even, you know, sometimes to get another packet of strings, you know, or this guitar needs it, or, you know, I'd really like to change the pickups here and there, or I really want a new pedal, I need this new bit of gear, and it just never stops. And it, it's more of an obsession. It, it's more of a a life a lifestyle is what I call it. Because when people say to me, you know, you really like guitar, it's, it's a nice hobby. I'm like, it's not really a hobby. You know, I really live my life by it. So, and it doesn't matter how good you are, how bad you are at playing guitar. If you've got that drive, that passion uh, to to enjoy the instrument and, and to bring it into your life, that's what really matters. So, um, yeah, I I just really appreciate you playing the, uh, the story on there. And uh, hopefully, um, 
yeah, it uh, it was enjoyable for other people to listen to. Um, I tried to read it myself, but I sounded a bit douchey, so that's why I asked Larry if he'd do that for me, and he did a really, really good job. Larry's got a really nice voice for narrating uh, stories and uh, when he does his podcasting as well. If anyone's watching this video and hasn't checked it out, check out Ashbrook Music and uh, the podcast that he has as well. It's really good stuff. Uh, another thing that sort of stood out in the episode that you were talking about is Run DMC and Aerosmith. Really interesting that Pipes, um, you were talking about that um, because I was just watching, um, while I was still catching the train to work every day, it's on a two hour commute each way, I was actually watching a documentary called The 80s, The Decade That Made Us. And it's like a six six part documentary or so. And one of the things they really talked about was was rap music and sampling. And they had that exact clip from Run DMC in there with Aerosmith. Um, and it was really interesting how uh, they they got them in the studio and everything. And um, they really went in depth in, in that story. And that pretty much sort of made that type of uh, genre of, of rap music come out with sampling and that sort of thing. Really, really interesting to... Um, to hear that story and then on the bliss, which is which is cool. Uh, PT, you know, your your musical influences there, uh, you know, whatever you like is, is cool with, with me, I'm sure everyone else. If you like Kanye, then pump that Kanye. If you like the Counting Crows, like my little intro there, then go for it. I, um, when I was first, when, like getting into guitar and, you know, just play like easy songs, I learnt Mr. Jones it was just a really easy song to play. I haven't really played it since, or since today, since I since then. But um, and so you know the song's all right. Yeah. So I, I remember I got the album. <laughs> like, what is this depressing music? I thought, wow. I um I did not listen to the Counting Crows ever since, unless they were on the radio or something like that. And I rarely, rarely listen to radio in Australia. Australian radio is rubbish. Oh, so there's some there's a there's a government owned one called Triple J, which is all right every now and then because they go through a genre of music at certain times of the day each week. And but yeah, Australian radio is crap. So, but um, yeah, I uh, I understand if, if you like that. Good for you. Good for you. I like a lot of strange music too. Uh, what's next on my little list here? Oh, listening to music. Does it make you want to play guitar more? Yes, it does. If there's a like a pump and riff or something, especially something new you've heard, or to me it's like something new that I've heard or an old song that I haven't heard in a, in a while that I was really obsessed with. But what really makes me want to play guitar, what really makes me want to play guitar above everything else, um, what really gets me motivated is when I see live music. If I go to a concert or just even if I'm at the pub and there's a band on and they're, and they're pretty good, it makes me want to play guitar. It makes you want to want to get home, want to play guitar. No matter how drunk I am, it just really makes you want to play guitar. It doesn't matter if the guitar is plugged into the amplifier or just playing it on its own. If I pick up my acoustic, it doesn't matter. It really just drives me. Like I look at those people on stage, and I don't know about you guys, but I always sort of daydream about being on stage and in front of the big crowd and playing playing music. Um, and that's one really big motivator that really gets me to play guitar. Even a friend of mine, he has a few guitars. He doesn't really play anything. Um, and he's got a bit of cash, so he's got he's got some all right guitars. And um, yeah, going to concerts and that sort of thing you know, really moved him to buy another guitar. He went out and bought a, um, a Schecter C1 Hellraiser um, FR, the one with the um, Floyd Rose on it. Uh, and you know, the same thing goes, like he just got so motivated, you know, I really want to play music, I really want a, another guitar and and it, it's just it's just that feeling you get. But yeah, like the other day I was listening to uh, Machine Head's latest album and they had a cover of um, The Sentinel, which is a Judas Priest cover. And that really got me motivated and I started listening to um, the Judas Priest version and that's the type of thing, like that's pump and that sort of sort of hook riff that gets into your head and you think, you know, I want to play that and then you start playing that and then you're like, you know, I want to play play other things and other music and it gets you motivated. So like I understand that really a hundred percent I understand that. Um things do get you motivated. But for me it's live music that really, really pushes me to get me motivated to really want to play guitar. I mean some days when I have a hard day at work, I'll come home and all I want to do is play guitar. But um, you know, seeing seeing live music really makes me want to play guitar so much more. 
so yeah, I guess um, everyone's got their little quirks for what makes them want to play guitar, but that's one of the things for me. Uh, the center song, Black, Black Snake Halo with Lone Wolf. I really like Black Snake Halo. I, I remember seeing them uh, come up on the forum a little bit when they were first starting. And it's just amazing that you've got this super group from around the world that have collaborated with a common interest just of music. Um, and, you know, Jan, Jan's a really good motivator when it comes to that sort of thing. And it's, it's really, really good sort of classic rock uh, music. And I, I really do like it. Um, the album should be out pretty soon, I'm guessing, from what I see. Like they're, um, they're close to, uh, you know, I think Jan was saying that he uh, is finalizing like track 11 or something like that. So I'm really looking forward to that. And um, if anyone's watching this and hasn't heard of them, just type in Black Snake Halo. They're on SoundCloud, Facebook, um, the Six Ring Bliss Forum. And that's a really cool collaboration uh, from people all over the world. Um, to have some really good rock music, so really enjoyed it, guys. Really enjoyed it. Uh, so I won't I won't talk on too much onto this one here because there are some other episodes coming which I'll do um, better video responses to and be more prepared. But uh, let's just uh, get down to the nitty gritty of it. The bliss is ending, and that's a, a really sad thought for me. I uh, it's been a long time. I think I started listening to the bliss down in the in the 30s sort of episodes, 30s, 40s. And uh, to begin with, when I first started listening to it, I thought, what are these people talking about? And some of the recordings were had a lot of hiss and self, like microphone noise and background noise. But there was something about it. I started listening to The Bliss because I was originally listening to a podcast called Pod Squad, which is basically about um, equipment, microphones, and about voice recording, doing voiceovers and radio work. And so I was, I was really getting into that podcast. That's about the time when I started to learn how to do my own sort of home recording. And I was um, slowly building up a little bit of a you know, recording studio and things like that. I even had the old sound card in the computer uh, hooked up to a, a separate mixer and that sort of thing. And I was really wanting to know how do I get a good sound out of microphones uh, there didn't I didn't really know anything about virtual amps or anything like that or even going direct. I didn't know anything about that. I had a little practice PV amp, uh, Fender Telecaster, and it's mic everything up. But listening to that show, I, I I really liked it. But I just once I just thought, isn't there a guitar podcast out there? So I ran a, a Google search for that, and I I found uh, Six String Bliss. And what I used to do is. I remember some of the episodes were recorded. There was so much sort of hiss and background noise. I used to run it into uh, Cubase and uh, put a noise, like a noise filter on it or expander sort of gate there and get out the background noise. Then I used to convert it to a, a and back into an MP3 file, put it onto a little device, which was uh, you plug it into the cigarette lighter of your car and you plug an SD memory card into it. And then that sends a radio signal to your car stereo so you can play it through that. And I used to listen to The Bliss that way. I'm um, driving to and from work and um, religiously got into it. I just I just thought it was a really cool conversation between uh, two guys with a common passion for the guitar. So, uh, yeah, I've been listening for a long time and it's influenced me in, in a lot of different aspects, playing electronics and everything else. So it's really sad to hear that the guys uh, decided to discontinue and uh, come to a conclusion on the podcast. But you know what? I understand. I totally understand the reasons why and everything has been going for a very long time. Uh, people change. People move on. Your families. Uh, I, I believe PT didn't even have a fa uh, Well, I knew you were married, but you didn't have um, uh, children before when you originally started The Bliss and The Origins and then... You know, your daughter was born whilst you were doing the Bliss. Um, not actually while you're doing the Bliss, but while the Bliss episodes were were coming out and uh, Pipes' family has gotten a lot bigger. And that's the thing, you know, in life, things change. And um, unfortunately, sometimes you have to let go of things that you love and things that you started doing. But all good things must come to an end. And I really get it. I really, really do. Um really do understand so i wish you guys nothing but the very best uh big thank you to pappy for coming on and saving the bliss that time as well so 
Uh, who knows what will happen in the future, but there are two more episodes I'm really looking forward to. I'm really looking forward to the Blues episode. Um, I I participated in that, and I'm really, really um, lucky that I did that. For a while, I wasn't going to participate in the Blues album because I'm just me. I'm not really into that type of Delta Blues, and I couldn't. I just couldn't find myself playing it. I, I tried, and I, I really, really sucked at playing slide guitar. So, um, but I found a track that. Um, was acceptable for the album and pushed myself to do it kind of at the last minute. I even brought on another member of, of the community to help me out. And I'm really, I guess you could say, I'm kind of proud of myself that I did that because now I'm part of one of the um, last albums that uh, Six String Bliss will put out unless uh, something else changes in the future. But for the moment, I'm really looking forward to that. And then the last episode, 272, which uh, is going to be a big one, I believe. It's It's just going to... I guess be something that a lot of people will, will tune into and you know understand that this is this is the end this is what's happened and but you know I'm a bit lost for words at the moment because it's been such a big part of my life the the whole point of me making these videos as well was uh, for one for me to gain a lot of confidence because I'm not very good at public speaking and and really in general speaking to strangers but um, doing this you know for a hundred or so episodes I guess has really, really helped me out and really given me the motivation to do it, be comfortable around a camera, be comfortable around talking to people. And um, really, musically as well, it's really helped me. So I've got a lot to thank The Bliss for. There are a lot of people on there that um, in the community that really stick out. So guys, um, thanks very much. Um, I do look forward to the next two episodes very much so. And uh, hopefully, uh, like you're saying, The Bliss will come back in another in another form, whether it's articles, whether it's reviews, whether it's anything at all, it'll be out there online, on the line. And um, who knows, some people may even step up. We may get a new host, we may not. It's hard to say in the future. Um, I'm not sure if I can commit to things because I'm not home as often um, as I could be or should be to commit to an ongoing podcast, but you never know what might happen, guys. So for everyone out there watching my videos, thank you very much for taking the time to watch my videos, which is a representation or regurg regurgitation of what happens with the Six String Bliss podcast. A fantastic podcast, and you will surely be missed. So guys, anyway, thanks again, but uh, I'm going to cut this video out, and I look forward to the next episode. So everybody, bliss on. Jones and me tell each other